Hello church. This is Refueling Wednesday, January 13th. Um, sorry for the lateness of the video, but uh, I'm doing this after a day's work and um, have been just reflecting today on a message to share with you that hopefully uh, is one that is inspiring and um, filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's just pray for that. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. Uh, thank you for who you are. Lord, I just pray that this time right now would just be overcome with your spirit, that everything that I say will be directly from you, Lord, and that the message that others hear uh, will be one that is meant exactly for them. Thank you, Jesus, for always being our shepherd, for always being there and uh, standing in the gap for us. We love you. We praise your holy name. Amen. All right, so today um, I'm going to touch on some things that might be a little personal to us, and um, I just feel led to share some things. So I have a few notes. I jotted some things down, um, and I have my Bible here and have some Bible verses that we'll refer to as well. Um, James 4, 14. For what is your life? It is, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Life is short, we know that. Some of us know that all too well. Some of us know that intimately and personally. We all know that because we all know that our time here is limited. Um, it's, it's inevitable. One day our time will come to an end here on this earth. It's not something that we like to talk about and it isn't something that we want to experience. Death never comes at a convenient time and many times strikes without warning. It's a day that we try to ignore and we pretend that it might never happen. Even when we know it is looming, we still don't like to talk about it. I can speak from experience as I know many of you can as well. When my dad was um, on uh, his last days, it, it was a time, his last year actually, was a time that I, I really had a hard time coming to grips with. And uh, my dad was a man of organization and planning. And he, his famous words were, measure twice, cut once. So what that meant was, you better have had your ducks in a row before you did any action so that you made sure that you were doing it right. And he wanted to make sure that I was prepared to carry on when he was gone. He had some business that he, um, you know, needed closed up and taken care of. And uh, he, you know, uh, had some things that he wanted me to do for him. You know, and he would say, I I'm not going to live forever. You know, it's time. It's time that we take care of business. Um, you know, and, and I did come to grips with that, but it was, it was hard, it was hard. Uh, and it just reminds me that we are called here on earth to live every single day in our purpose, in our divine purpose. We all have a purpose here on earth and it very rarely has to do with us as individuals. Our purpose is divine in nature our purpose is one that is a part of kingdom building and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And your purpose fits where, where in, in that in some way, whether it's uh, the job that you do, the family that you're raising, kids that you are leading, um, whatever it is, you, you fit into a divine purpose that is made for you, for your uniqueness for your talents, for your strengths, and for your, your um, purpose with God here on earth. Um, you know, the Bible also says in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, verses 19 and 20, um, and, and it talks about whatever we do, whether we, whatever we eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. We are meant to bring glory to our creator. We're meant to be that bright light and that shining star for Jesus Christ. We're meant to be the light and the love for others 
uh, so that they might know Jesus if they don't already, that they might see a glimpse of Jesus through us and through the living of our lives. Um, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God. Yeah, we must honor God. And a part of how we honor God is how we live our life and the actions that we do in our lives. Um, growing up in, in my household as a young child, uh, I had a, a high-strung Italian dad coupled with a strong German mom. Um, we joke in our family, it was good stock, good German stock. And um, so if you can imagine that, there really was no room for excuses uh, for not not having a purpose, not having a goal-driven life. Um, and, you know, there was just no room uh, for not taking charge of the circumstances around us. Uh, you know, so it, it makes me to think about what do we occupy our time with? You know, the time that we're here on earth, it's borrowed time. You know, it's kind of like a uh, time that is spent waiting or acting. And what is it that we do in with this time that we have? We can take charge of the time or we can be victims to the circumstances around us and to what happens around us in life, whether that is loss or disappointment or pain or um, losing a job or, you know, not getting a good grade on a test whatever it is we can, can we can succumb to what's happening around us or we can take charge of our circumstances and rise above it and you know when we have the the gift of Jesus Christ in our lives when we know Jesus Christ as our personal lord and savior and we have the holy spirit living inside of us gosh the sky's the limit we can do all things through christ who strengthens us when we recognize the power that we have inside of us oh we can overcome anything now it doesn't mean that life's going to be easy and we're gonna walk around with a big victory sign all the time but what it does mean is that we always are in the arms of Jesus if we allow it. And we are always in the presence and dwelling in the presence of the Lord. And wow, what power that has, what peace that has. Um, just a, an incredible amount of, for me, it's really a relief because it means that I don't have to rely on my own strength because because God knows that I am not strong enough to go through this life without him. I am not even, you know, uh, I'm not wise enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. But with Jesus Christ living inside of me, with the Holy Spirit dwelling, if I dwell in that, oh, I am fueled. I am ignited. Uh, I am energized. I'm charged to just face anything and with God's protection and the protection of the Holy Spirit oh gosh we can do just about anything that uh, God has in store for us and not just about we can do anything that God has as our purpose we just most of the time we're our own worst enemy we're our own limiting factor because um we we don't we don't recognize it and we don't really understand it so you know we we don't know we don't know the day we don't know the hour that we're going to um leave this earth but we do know that one day it will come and you know we we just there there are times too that we just don't understand what happens around us when we think about um, people who die prematurely you know when we think about what uh, pastor and deb are going through um there's just no reason 
there's no way that we can understand with our earthly mind um, wh why. And you know, there are, there are times where we're just not meant to understand why. But what we are meant to do is to put our trust in Jesus Christ, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who knows it all, the almighty, the all powerful, the all knowing. We are to put our trust in Jesus and put one foot in front of the other and continue on with our purpose. Because no matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you are going through right now, you have a purpose that you are uniquely designed to fulfill. And I would just encourage each and every one of us just to start acting on that purpose. We know in some way it is building up the kingdom, no matter where we're at. And you can do that. If you know somebody who is hurting or going through a difficult time, reach out to them. Send them a text, pick up the phone, uh, send them flowers, buy them lunch, do something that will encourage them. Um, if you know someone who maybe is a brand new Christian and is struggling trying to figure out life, walk alongside them, pick them up, you know, um, not, not really pick them up, but pick them up spiritually, um, encourage them, maybe get them a one-year Bible to read through the Bible in a year. And better yet, maybe read through the Bible with them and help them to understand the love of Jesus and their purpose in this world. Yeah. I, I think about all the ways that we can just walk alongside people and just journey through life with them. Uh, and there's just so many ways. Uh, how about reaching out to maybe a child? Maybe a child who is sitting all alone um, and just, you know, just engaging in a conversation uh, and just sharing the love of Jesus. You know, Jesus says, let the children come to me. You know, Jesus loves the little children. And there are so many ways that we can share the love of Jesus with them. Some people are even called to the mission field and they are called either here in the United States or they're called overseas. And they're called to bring the good news to areas that have not heard about Jesus yet. Can you believe that there's places in this world who do not know Jesus Christ? It's almost unbelievable to me, but there are. And some, some people are called to take that message and to go and to share it. So no matter who you are, how old you are, what season in life you're in, there is a purpose for you. And there is something that you can do to help encourage and help to build up the kingdom. So as we close together uh, today, let us think about our time here on earth. And let's make it count. Let's make it count for Jesus Christ. Let's leave a legacy here of love. And let's walk in our divine purpose. After all, our time here is short. So let's leave a mark that will carry on for generations to come. I hope this word has left you feeling just encouraged and inspired to share the love that you have with others. Let's go and be the church. You are loved.